As of version 0.22, there are 14 unlockable new cards in Inscription Casey's mod, many of which have new sigils. In this video we're going to go over all of them, their stats and sigils, and I invite you to leave your thoughts on them in the comments below. But before we get to the 14 unlockables, uh, I want to mention Aqua Squirrels, which are squirrels with the Waterborne Sigil that replace normal squirrels in your deck when using the Squirrel Fish Challenge. And there is the Made of Stone Sigil, which was made specifically for the moon so that it's no longer vulnerable to the Stinky or Touch of Death sigils like in the main game. Although the Made of Stone Sigil does not normally appear on any other card, you can acquire it randomly through the Cave Trial event on the map. On to the 14 unlockables, starting with the Cuckoo. It's a bird kin card that costs 1 blood, has 1 power, and 1 health. It has the flying sigil and a new sigil called Brood Parasite. What it does is place a broken egg card in the space in front of it on Leshy's side. This is pretty useful as it prevents Leshy from getting a creature on board to that zone, as it's filled by the egg and your Cuckoo flies over it to attack Leshy directly. While it's a pretty good card, there is some risk involved. On rare occasions, the Brood Parasite Sigil will summon a Raven Egg instead of a Broken Egg to Leshy's side, which kind of helps him out more than it helps you. Also, the Sigil itself doesn't really do much on its own or in combination with other Sigils, except for the Flying Sigil, as the whole point is to keep the Egg in that zone, so you want to have a Flying Sigil card to attack over it. Direwolf Pup is a wolf kin card that costs 2 blood, has 1 power and 1 health, and 2 sigils. The first is the Bone Digger Sigil, which isn't entirely new as it can be found in Act 2 of the main game, but it is new to Leshy's Cabin. As for what it does, at the end of your turn it gives you 1 free bone. The Direwolf Pup also has the Fledgling Sigil, which evolves it into another new card, the Direwolf, after 1 turn. The Dire Wolf is a Wolfkin card with a cost of 3 blood, has 2 power, and 5 health. It also has a new sigil called Double Strike, which, pretty self-explanatory, allows Dire Wolf to attack twice each turn, making both Dire Wolf Pup and Dire Wolf pretty good new cards. The Flying Ant is an insect kin card with 1 blood cost, the Ant Attack Power sigil, and 1 health and it has the Airborne Sigil. It's essentially just the Worker Ant except with one less health and the ability to fly. It makes the Ant strategy much better, and it's a part of the Ant Starter Deck as well. The Lemergier is a Birdkin card with a 3 blood cost, a new Power Sigil, and 4 health. It also has the Airborne Sigil. Its new Power Sigil gives it power equal to half the number of Bone Tokens you possess at any time, rounding down. It caters to a specific strategy, specifically one where you can generate a lot of bones quickly and without needing to use them up for something else. So, it's a pretty specific card in its usage, however I like how it gives another unique use for the bone tokens. Depending on what other cards you have to work with, this card can make for a really good finisher. Mealworm is an insect kin card that costs 2 bones, has 0 power, and 2 health. It has a new sigil called Morsel, that transfers its current stats to any creature summoned by sacrificing Mealworm. It's an interesting new sigil, and in combination with certain other sigils, or by simply powering up Mealworm at the campfire event, Mealworm can make for a pretty good card. Mud Turtle is a reptile kin card with a cost of 2 blood, 2 power, and 2 health, and it has a sigil that can be found in Acts 2 and 3 of the main game, but is new to Leshy's Cabin. That sigil is armored, and it protects anything with it from the first attack against it. When Mud Turtle is hit, this card changes to show him without his shell, as the sigil's ability is used up. Raccoon is a card with no kin, a cost of 3 bones, and has 1 power and 1 health. It also has a new sigil called Scavenger. It makes it so that every time you defeat one of Leshy's creatures, you get a bone token, including by overkill damage. For a bone strategy, it's a pretty good new sigil, arguably better than the Bone Digger Sigil. Also, I love how smug the raccoon looks. Red Heart is an Elk Kin card with a cost of 2 blood, has another new Power Sigil, and has 2 health. And it also has the Sprinter Sigil. Its Power Sigil is called Spilled Blood, and it makes it so that Red Heart's power is equal to the number of cards that you sacrificed during your turn. However, on the next turn, it resets back to 0. Red Heart can make for a good finisher if you have a good tribute engine, but overall, 
it's not the most useful card in my testing. Tadpole is a reptile kin card, has no cost, zero power and one health. It has the Waterborne Sigil and the Fledgling Sigil, which evolves it into a Bullfrog after one turn. Since it has no cost, this card is comparable to Gek, except that it's not a rare card, and it can't attack or defend on the turn that it's summoned. Overall, it's a really good new card, and it helps solidify Reptiles as one of, if not the best, kin in my opinion, as they have access to two different cards with no cost. Wild Bull is an Elk Kin card with a cost of 2 blood, 3 power, and 2 health, and it has a new sigil called Rampager, which essentially makes it switch places with the card to the right of it at the end of your turn, or if it is in the rightmost zone, it will go left instead. Wolverine is a card of no kin, costing 5 bones and having 1 power and 3 health. It has a new sigil called Bloodlust, which increases its power by 1 each time it defeats a creature. On a card like this, with a pretty high cost of 5 bones, no kin, and only 1 attack power, I don't think it's really that good. But if you transfer its sigil onto something else, like the Mantis God as shown here, I think it can be a pretty good sigil. As for the Wolverine as a card, I think it's not very good. This is Ejerok, a shape-shifting card with 4 power and 1 health, and the Repulsive Sigil. This card works in a really weird and unique way, as it only reveals itself when it's played. So until then, it looks like a random other card in your deck, and it assumes that card's cost and sigils, then changes into its true form once it's summoned. You don't even see its real form when you first get the card, as it will be posing as a different rare card. It can be any of them, and you'll know that it's the imposter by the red glow of the card's eyes, or in this case the shovel, as well as the question mark in the card's name. It's a pretty good card, and again, it has the Repulsive Sigil, which if you don't know, uh, prevents Leshy from actually attacking this card. The weakness, of course, being if they have something with the Flight Sigil to fly over it and attack you directly. Now, this is the only way you can really get this uh, Repulsive Sigil, as far as I know, because the only other place that it shows up in the game is on the Starvation card, which only shows up on Leshy's field whenever you run out of cards. Last, but certainly not least, we have Peltlice, another rare card of the Insect Kin, with a cost of 4 blood, 1 power, and 1 health. What, you're confused? Why does it have such a high cost, and such low stats, and no sigils? Well, this card has a hidden ability, which, as you might have inferred, has to do with Pelts. Whenever you play a Pelt card, Pelt Lice will automatically summon itself from your hand or deck, and that's it. Obviously, it's not a great strategy to play a Pelt deck or a lot of Pelt cards unless you're going up against the Trapper, and drawing Pelt Lice isn't very helpful, but the card can actually come in handy if you decide to add it to your deck in some situations. It's kind of a joke card, obviously, but it is pretty funny. Anyways, those are all of the new and unlockable cards and sigils in Casey's mod as of version 0.22. Subscribe for more videos on Inscription, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.